Hello, good morning everyone. Today is the end bad governance protest day 10. As the citizens of Nigeria are preparing to storm Abuja in millions of March, the Poland is coming against Tinumbu, asking Tinumbu to release the students and lecturers who are Polish citizens that were adopted by the Department of State Service in Kano. The DSS accused um, the Polish citizens who were in um, a trip about their school like excursion. They came to Kano and it happens that they came during the protest and um, as people were protesting, they came out to take pictures and to ask questions. So DSS came, they adopted them. They said they are part of the people who are sponsoring the protest. So the, the Poland government has responded to Tinumbu that, come on, your intelligence are so poor. You people don't have intelligence. How could it be that students who are just taking pictures, you people said they are the ones sponsoring protest. Is that how you conduct your investigation? And this speaks volume. So why so many innocent Nigerians are being arrested every day without intelligence? Nigerians don't have what they call security intelligence at all. Now, during this protest, you we realize that today DSS we said it is some more initial war. Tomorrow they will say there are some people from outside the country. The other day they will say it was another country who want to destroy Nigeria. Tinubu is you say it, it was P2B. Ah, I don't just understand the kind of country we are in. So, let me read these articles from you from the People's Gazette. It said, Poland seeks release of students, lecturers arrested by DSS while taking protest pictures, neighbors as spies. This is so embarrassing to international community. Nigerian government said those Polish citizens are spies. <laughs> Maybe they came for Russia, right? <laughs> Maybe they came to spies for Russia. What an embarrassing government we have in Nigeria. This is so embarrassing. It's so embarrassing that the ESS arrested the Polish citizens, say they are spies. Maybe they are spies from Russia. In almost some security meeting, at the end they discovered that these people were just students who came for excursion taking pictures. It's so unfortunate anyway. Let's go through the article to understand what um, the government are saying. It says the Polish authorities are negotiating the release of seven citizens detained by Nigerian secret police SSS for allegedly hosting Russian flag during nationwide demonstrations against hunger and a regressive economy on Monday. Now, the issue is that they even accuse them of hosting Russian flag. So maybe they were thinking that these people are the one who are hosting Russian flag. <laughs> anyway, um, the DSS said that the arrest of the Polish citizens are justified. But the Polish government is warning Tinumbu that this is not how to carry out investigation because these people, they applied for visa, they gave the visa, the school sent them there. So the record is there, they seized their phone, they discovered that there is no connection with the allegation level against them. Now, Nigeria government, they are ashamed. And this could affect the diplomatic relation between the Poland and Nigeria. Tinumbu keep on destroying Nigeria. Tinumbu has never done anything good for Nigeria, but he keep on destroying Nigeria. And the one word I normally tell people is that Tinumbu and his cohorts are not Democrats. They only wanted power, and now they have it. I think one way of looking at it is to realize that Nigerians have always been very deeply committed to democracy, but we are finding out now that our leaders have never been committed to democracy. They've been committed to the acquisition of power and the use of power for self-aggrandizement, but not governance. Governance is about providing for the people. It's about addressing the problems that affect the people. It's about improving lives, livelihoods, and people's welfare. And these are what we have not had. And the tragedy of Nigeria is when you count back from 1999, each regime that comes into power, each government that comes into power, is worse than the previous one. Obasanjo, that we criticize so heavily, is now standing upright as the most competent and committed government we have had. The person who succeeded him, unfortunately, didn't have the health to do much. Then Jonathan came out, 
and he turned out to be much worse. And we were saying with Jonathan, this is the first university graduate that is ruling this country. Mm -hmm. We will see evidence of that education in the governance. It turned out to be all about uh, corruption. Jonathan mm -hmm. left, then Buhari came out, definitely yeah. worse than uh, Jonathan. And now Nigerians are in their hundreds of thousands in the streets saying that the current uh, Tinubu administration is the worst we have seen when you take your index as misery and suffering of the people. Mm -hmm. How can we sustain a country when each government that comes in is worse than the all the previous one. ones? That's why I actually asked the question as to whether indeed, is it about the leadership? Is it that the, we've just not been able to vote for the right leaders? Or is the problem really with us as a people? And it's reflected in, you know, in, in government. But maybe you'll <laughs> respond to that after Sulai asked his uh, question. Sulai, you were going to ask. Go ahead. Well, uh, you, you know, Nigeria has actually gone through a lot. Uh, banditry, uh, Boko Haram, uh, insecurity, and uh, the corruption you spoke about, the government of uh, good luck, Jonathan. Uh, perhaps uh, what are those key factors, uh, if you would, uh, perhaps critical three, that you think that the Tinubu administration should start looking into at the moment that will also, as they fix, give more voice to the mm -hmm. people in a democracy. What we've done in our memo is to give an integrated argument to say that Nigeria is in deep misery and suffering because insecurity is too high and the economy is not working for the people. Now, why do we have these two problems? because the level of corruption in government has continued to rise each year. And because corruption is rising, there's no way you can guarantee security for two reasons. One is you can't do procurements that uh, enable the government to do its work because the resources are filtered away. The second thing is that Nigerian citizens are also watching. The picture they see of those in government are people who are stealing the wealth of the nation. And then they ask themselves one question. How come they are able to steal the wealth of the country and we can't? Oh, they have security with guns. We don't. So what have Nigerians been doing? They have been procuring guns. And they have mm. been using these guns against their neighbors, against people they don't know, against the state, against security, against everybody. So it's the demonstration effect when the leadership does not live up to the expectation of the people. People learn lessons. And lessons can be positive. Lessons can be negative. Because the corruption is so high, Nigerians are also learning very terrible lessons of what they will do, which is the ideology of uh, self-help. So our key argument is this. Everybody knows that the center of corruption is in government. And what the leader of government <coughs> needs to do is to seriously sanction those among his team that have been shown in public to be corrupt. We have had ministers in this particular government mm. where massive allegations have been released against them and it's now a year and nothing has happened. Thanks. This is a signal that this government is not ready to punish those among them who are corrupt. Mm. And that's a powerful message. Once the president doesn't come out openly, clearly, without ambiguity, and shows his own team that it's not business as usual, and accountability will count in this government. You mess up with public resources, you go to jail. Right. That's the signal all Nigerians have been waiting for, and that's the signal we are not seeing. Uh, rather, unfortunately, I mean, especially when you put it that way. Now, you narrowed it down to the issues of incompetence and a lack of empathy on the part of 
you know, the nation's uh, leadership. Uh, I mean, expatiate on that and how it's fundamental to Nigeria's problems. You see, the question of competence is very basic in good governance because you need to be able to search for teams, for people who can deliver on the mission you give to them. Mm -hmm. And the proof of this is when you look at the first tenure of Tinubu as governor of Lagos State and his second tenure as governor of Lagos State. All analysts are agreed that he was very successful in choosing people with proven competence. And precisely because of that, there was a marked increased capacity of the government of Lagos to deliver services to the people. Mm -hmm. This time around, it is also very clear to all analysts that the calculation in government is that we want a political team that will guarantee we remain in office for a second term. And that competence was definitely not at the center of consideration in the choice of the key players in the current government. And we are now suffering because of that choice, that political decision that has been made. So the question of competence it's very clear. But I think the whole question of uh, uh, government is that our constitution is clear. The purpose of government mm. is to provide for the security and welfare of citizens. These are the two things all Nigerian citizens are saying. We are not seeing it. We are not seeing improved security. And we are not seeing improved welfare. Therefore, the verdict is failure. And if you are failing in your key mission, mm. it means there is a critical tipping point that's approaching. And that's why we talk of Nigeria being at the crossroads. So what does this president need to do? Sorry, No, no, that's fine. What does this president need to do now to salvage the situation and to bring back the trust of the people back in not just this administration, but maybe going forward? What are the fundamentals that need to be? I think the first thing that needs to happen is to show a clear commitment to combating corruption within the team itself. Once the president will have the boldness and the insight to do that, people will begin to relax and feel the perspective, the future would be bright because steps are being taken. And if the level of anger and frustration is so high now, is that it's because people are not seeing any steps being taken. Take this example of promises almost on a daily basis about provisions and palliatives made for the poor. Yeah. We live in this society. There is none of us who doesn't know poor people. And you do your survey around those you know. Mm. No poor person has ever benefited from any of these things governments talk about. So it is not impressive for government to be saying, we are doing this for the poor, when the poor never ever see what mm. is being claimed. Do you, do you have a recipe to arrest him that? Mm. Because now they, he has just rejected the humanitarian affairs uh, uh, ministry mm. and uh, you know Nigeria has a very big youth population and uh, they've been talking now that you uh, have been able to put your finger on some of the key concerns which is implementation mm. uh, what do you think uh, the, the Tinubu administration should start looking at? I think the point has to be made very clearly that government is not unaware of what's happening to the failure of its programs. Mm. This uh, food items, cereals and rice that are being offered, the monetary contributions being made for the poor, we all know exactly what has happened to them. When food is being supplied, it's given to state governors who give it to their local government chairman, 
who then passes through the ward chairman of the ruling party in the state. So you know you are handing over this directly to politically uh, powerful individuals who believe that that is their reward mm. for their party being in power. So there isn't even an attempt to say, we have a register of the poor in this country. The register exists, but that register has never been used for allocation. And government can do it because it has the register. We spent 10 years in this country doing a detailed register of the poor. They know who they are, mm -hmm. and they know where they are, and they have their telephone numbers. But they never even make the effort to reach them. And I'm saying the onus of proof is on government now. And every Nigerian is looking at them. If the poor don't start to see a change, they don't start seeing benefits, yeah. then these people are saying, well, we draw a line with government. Mm. It's the end of public trust. And now it's everybody for themselves. And when it comes to that stage, then I think it will be a crisis where we move beyond the tipping point. We hope things don't get uh, to Absolutely. that Absolutely. That's yeah. why we're having this conversation. Mm -hmm. I would like to thank you for your time, Professor uh, Jibrin Ibrahim. Many thanks for your insights on Newsnight.